what's going on everybody this is abby here and i have today the homie james robinson uh we go way 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 back uh we dating ourselves now i feel i feel i I don't know i don't know how i feel we went to high school together either way james is the man and i can't wait to know more about his story and be able to share this with you all so without further ado mr james how you doing today I am doing awesome. Thank you for having me upon this um, this journey that you've embarked on of, of just getting the word out there on what you believe and what people need to hear. But I'm doing amazing. Uh, it's uh, a sunny Tuesday or Wednesday over here. I'm sorry, I know you're a day <laughs> a Wednesday over here. Um, I'm doing amazing. Can't no complaints. Uh, I'm just I'm blessed with a lot of things that's going on right now in my life. So I'm doing amazing. Thanks for asking. That's awesome. That's awesome. All right. So let's get into it, right? How about you break down kind of like where you're from and we'll take us to like where you're from and however you get there, you can kind of give us an idea of what you're doing today. And gotcha. then, you know, we'll, we'll dig a little bit deeper on how you got there throughout it. Okay. Gotcha. Um, okay. So try to keep this, I'm going to try to keep this without being too verbose or lengthy. Um, I'm originally from South Carolina small town called Chester, but I grew up in Georgia, went to, uh, you know, state, grew up in Marietta. Uh, That's where we went to school at Abbey. (laughs) Um, um, But from high school, went off to UGA, um, had aspirations of becoming an educator, uh, which I did get my degree in education and uh, a a minor in another degree uh, to deal with some type of engineering program. Uh, And then uh, from there, at the end of college, social media started impact everybody so uh i became doing i started doing a lot of stuff on social media uh, i started teaching um i was a teacher at, for about three or four years um i just didn't like being balled up into a room i felt like i had more to get to the world so uh i was like yo i let me become a personal trainer i have some more flexibility in my schedule i can still make ends meet and with me being a personal trainer i can do what i wanted to do on social media without having the eyes of education you know, beaming down on me like, oh, he does this on social media, you know, and then, you know, the beliefs and what people agree is right and wrong and all that type of stuff. So uh, I took that route. And then when I took the route of becoming a personal trainer, <laughs> that led me more to spend more time on social media. That led me becoming to an influencer, uh, building my community. And I tell people it wasn't built overnight. It took years and years and years and years of building a solid community on social media. Um, it wasn't something that was built off like, hey, let's do this and, you know, fake the following and try to be something that we're really not. It was the original built up real nice on social media, which is my IG tag actually started from a personal training standpoint with my guy, Jeremy Mayweather. And, uh, we came, um, the way I got the name built up real nice came from me training in the gym every day. I used to go to one LA fitness and a Zumba instructor, um, used to call me burn. And I always used to be like, why, why are you calling me burn? And uh, she said, uh, oh, burn stands for built up real nice. And I was like, oh, that is neat. I said, I'm going to run with this. I said, do you mind if I take the name? I said, I love the name. I'm going to put it on my social media, do all that type of stuff. And then uh, we took it from there. And then we did some workout programs. And then Jeremy went a different direction. I went in a different direction because I had more time to spend on social media. Uh, So I kept built up real nice going as me. Uh, and then from there, it just other opportunities opened up. (laughs) Um, you know, my IG lives came available. Uh, I was discovered by a plus size model, uh, that wanted me to get me on the run name, her name, to get me on the runway. Her name is Christina Mendez. Um, and she's just amazing. You know, she just fell on my live one day. I was doing what I would love, which is entertaining. I had my dogs around me. Uh, and I was just talking to my community and she said, I would love to see you on the runway. And I thought it was a joke. And then I did my research behind her and she was real. And so. I went from being on a live IG to a month later to her flying down, teaching me how to walk down the runway to uh, being on actual runway in New York. And then the modeling world opened up to me. And anytime I dive into something new, I put my all into it. So networking, I started networking. I started working with brands. Uh, And then from my personal training job, I had a couple that I used to train, an older couple, uh, where her name is Lauren and uh, you know, her husband was named Robert. He owned it. He, you know, he ran a maintenance company. He was like, Hey, looking for other employment opportunities. And I was like, yeah, like I'm always looking for new employment. So literally just went from training to running a maintenance company to modeling, uh, to 
pushing built up real nice as far as apparel training programs uh it was just amazing so uh a lot of things happened um i, I kind of got away from training put on a little bit of weight to be a big and tall model uh and then did a reverse of that uh big transformation in the past couple of years during the pandemic because health is wealth uh you know i had to take care of my blood pressure and a lot of things i didn't really know i had i got some physicals and i'm like oh okay but i'm great now uh i feel amazing and uh this is where you see me today so you see built up real nice the educator model uh, i used to dj at times for for schools and elementaries uh, i've always dabbled in music motivational music for kids i would take mainstream music and turn around to where kids could play it in schools um and now i'm doing like now i'm leaning more on my faith than anything so now i'm doing like gospels instrumentals uh it is just i'm all over the place but i am at peace if that makes sense so I love what I'm doing. I love the social media aspects of what I'm doing. I love the people that I'm inspiring. Uh, and I'm pushing all these ideas that God are giving to me at a full throttle, you know, to do his work now. So uh, I have evolved, I have changed a lot. Uh, <laughs> I've, you know, I've, from billboards to Vegas uh, to where I am now, it's just been, I've been immensely blessed and I never got to see how blessed I was until I got into this pandemic to where I just had to realize all the things that I've done have been presented with or opportunities uh so yeah that is me in a nutshell i hope i you know i was trying to create a bridge on everything but sometimes it hops around no, you got here. it man <laughs> you nailed it and what i love about what you were speaking about is everything that you've done still comes together to who you are i think a lot of times we feel like this experience or that experience doesn't really account for today but what happens is the hodgepodge of things that we participate in or that we experience helps build us for the person that we are today. And we start incorporating those things into what we do and how we present ourselves. Right. So all of the, the different opportunities that you have allow you to govern yourself today to where you've made that decision on how you want to move forward. And I really like that because, I mean, yeah, I followed your journey forever. It was bumping Mr. Rob when I was teaching PE, right. you know? So uh, when it comes down to it, being able to see the progress and knowing that we're just at different levels of maturity as we age and you may pivot again and do something different, right. but it's wonderful to see how everything kind of comes together. And even with the messages that you're sharing today, being an educator or having the masters and things like that, you're able to present things to where people can understand yep. and relate. And so I think that's, I think that's beautiful. Yeah. I think that's beautiful. So if you were to, with everything that you have said and have experienced and have participated in current day, if someone were to, were to ask you what you do, what would you say? Mm. It would be a list. <laughs> it would be, have to be a list. So um, I'm a general. And that's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm a general manager. I'm a big and tall model. I'm a social media influencer. I'm a music artist. Um, and I'm a motivational speaker. That's how I would ball it up into a list. But if I had to use two words, I would say I'm doing God's work. So I think all those things combined are the things that have been aligned for me at this time in my life, uh, to do the things I love and do. You know, I tell people, a lot of people don't like to get their hands dirty. And I tell people, you know, being the general manager of a maintenance company, I can be on a property changing trash one morning. And then being on a flight to go shoot a photo shoot in Las Vegas the next morning, back to an interview on my social media with a brand that I worked for and back into a gym that following day to work out. And I tell people, never get too profitable to where you are. Like, you know, you know, it's, it's, it's little things that you learn along the way that may assist you in getting that big job or big opportunity that you want. I tell people, you know, and it's like, how did you get on a billboard in Vegas? You know? And I'm like, when I was a paraprofessional in school, you know, as an educator coming out of school to see if I wanted to teach physical education or cause I didn't want to really do career and technical education anymore. So I was a para for a couple of years and I was like, Oh, like I taught myself how to spin the ball on my hand while I was a para, you know, with the kids and they just loved it. And I was like, in my first photo shoot, I was like, hey, can anybody spin a ball? And I was like, no. And I was like, yo, this is so crazy. They're asking if anybody can spin a ball on your hand. And I'm like, yeah, I got it. And so I went to spin the ball and I was, you know, taking pictures and just enjoying the camera. And that turned out being a lot of storefronts across the U.S. 
for the store I'm out of for. And then that turned out like, hey, this guy, you know, is, you know, this guy's making us, you know, look good. And then another shot came from, which is my Vegas shot. I'm like, arms out like this. It wasn't even part of the shoot. Like the photographer was, you know, was going upstairs. And I was so excited about shooting outside in these clothing. I was on top of a like AC unit or brick wall. And I was like, hey, take this shot. And he just snapped it. And that turned out to be the one that been on, you know, Vegas billboard. And I'm like, and I didn't even know that. So people was like, yo, I just, I'm driving into, I'm driving down the Vegas strip and I see you. And I was like, bro, I'm not in Vegas. And I was like, no, like, and the, the first person to see it was actually my high school trainer, Jeff Hobbs. He was like, you're in Jeff. Vegas. <laughs> and I was like, bro, like, cut it out, man. I'm not in no Vegas, cut it out. And he was like, yeah, my hotel is right next to your billboard or around the corner from your billboard. And I was like, so it's kind of funny how all those things align to confirm that I'm doing the right things. Now, have I made mistakes? Yes, of course. Have I done a lot of things that I would do over to change? Yeah, of course. But those mistakes taught me a lot about who I am today, taught me growth, uh, taught me maturity, taught me patience, taught, taught me wisdom. Um, and I think coming into, especially our generation, Abby, we're in the midst of the new millennials, old school, middle school, I, all that stuff. Like we, we, we're like the jack of all trades. Cause we got to understand, we understand this new stuff and we get the old school we stuff. Was right. We was around with exactly. dialogue. So, you know, you know, we had to, you know, we had the little Pokemon things you used to have to have in school, you know, and hit the buttons and or whatever them little things that used to grow your own little pet on your little keychain to, yep, Giga pet. To, you know, mm -hmm. now we got Game Boys that hook up to TVs and, you know, and the palm of your hand, you got HD gaming. So, you know, it's just, I would have to say, like, I, I don't have one title. So when people ask me what I do, I just like, yo, I do God's work. And then people are like, okay, what do you do? And I'm like, and I tell them, it's like, oh, you got a busy schedule. And I'm like, yeah, but I always find time out through that throughout the day. Like, I pray three times a day. And as you know, I always give God thanks for waking me up in the morning. Uh, whatever I'm going through, I always think of, you know, hey, I'm breathing. I'm here. I'm still here. So you got you got something for me to do if I'm still here. Uh, that's the way I look at my days now. Mm -hmm. I used to wake up and just be going 100 miles per hour. Oh, I got to do this. got to do that. got to do this. got to do that. got to do this. got to do this trend. got to do that. And I'm like. I wake up every morning and I just pray for God. It's not like, God, lead me to where you need for me to be, you know. You know, I know I got meetings, I got a schedule, but, you know, in the midst of all that, lead me to where you think I need to be or, come, you know, the people I need to come in contact or the things I need to do. So, yeah, I got off topic again, but those are my things that I do uh, as far as my titles. <laughs> no, that's great because, honestly, when it comes down to it, everything that you have and God has prepared you for, opens mm -hmm. doors for you and you're blessed to be able to walk through various different doors and mm -hmm. perform well. So I think what I was getting at when it comes down to it is even self-discovery for myself is actually knowing what you do and or what doors you open and what doors you're walking through. So being a little bit firmer on that, which is, you know, so something like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm claiming now more to say right. I do X so that people don't tell me what I do, because exactly. that's what happens, right? If you don't know right? what you do, you know what you do somebody's going to yep. tell you what you do. And and you might not like what people tell exactly. you that you do. So it's important that you have an understanding of what you either do or what you're willing to do so that you don't find yourself in right. compromising positions. Right. And that's, that's, I think, as we get older, we start to find out who we are. Cause I used to be a yes guy. Yeah, I can do this. I can do that. I can do this. I can do that. And I'm like, nah, I can't. No, I can't. And it's so funny when you tell people no, at first they're like, but like weeks later, they gain your respect. I was in a conversation with a, a, mm. a new, you know, brand that I, I plan on working with. And they gave it, they gave a suggestion and I was like, oh yeah, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. I think this, and they, they just suspected me to be like, oh yeah, that's a great idea. And I was like, I hear what you're saying, but I don't think that's the best route to go about it. And so that it, you, everybody's face is just like, I was like, well, what are your suggestions? You know, not that I was coming at them in a, you know, negative way, but I was just like, well, blah, 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 blah. And when you have people in meetings go from telling you stuff to, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh, and what are your thoughts on this? You're like, okay. 
Like, you know, it's, and then they, you know, they set up bigger meetings for you because you're not the guy that's just going to come in like, hey, I do this, I do that, I do this. This guy has a bigger vision, a bigger view on social media aspect, a bigger insight on the the, the ground on what's going on out there. Because a lot of these people work in offices that are in brands. They understand social media, but they, they don't, they're not living in it. So, you know, once you recorded so many mm -hmm. videos, have done so many things, you understand how it works and how it transcends and how it you know, can take you here or take you there. And I tell people, you know, the numbers on your pages, if you get stuck on them too much, they'll start to dictate the way you feel about your day and the way you feel about yourself and your self-worth. I say, you got to understand mm -hmm. these numbers are meant for you to be like, hey, I want to pay for more recognition. I want to pay for more people to see me. You know, this, that's the whole ultimate goal of these social media platforms is to be seen. So in order for them to make money, hey, I'm going to make your numbers go down just a little bit to feel like you're doing something wrong so that you can pay for your attention or pay for people to come and look at you or feel obligated to go buy traffic to come to your page. And it's all a, it's all a bigger business than that. And that's why I tell people, you know, I was like, yeah, every post is not going to do well. I mean, you know, I tell people, do you, do you got gas in your car every single day you go to work? Sometimes you got to fill it up. You know, sometimes you're going to have, well, you, you looking at the E sign and it's like, all right, I got to fill up. Sometimes you got to pull over and fill up your car. You know, it, I say you should look at your posts the same way. Sometimes you got to refuel yourself. Sometimes, you know, you can't be at your best every day. You can't win every day. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. um, you got to learn how to break down, break down your schedule, break down who you're about, have something you stick to. And I tell people the biggest thing that kills people nowadays or that destroys people's dreams is consistency. If it's not working the first week, the first month, the first year, uh, it's not. it's not worth it. And then somebody else comes along and takes that same idea the next year and it blows up. Oh, I had this idea. Well, he wasn't consistent with it. And again, it's not about who does it first anymore. It's about who does it the best. And that's, I think people have to learn that about anything that they're doing. But first and foremost, you need to pray about anything before you go into anything. And that's, 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 that's been my goal. Like, I got the opportunity. I, I I pray about it for about a week. I just don't be like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I'll meet with you. I'll do this. No, nah, I'm just like, mm, like, I'll, I'll get back with you. You know, I'll follow up with you. And it's, it's when you pray about what you're doing, you'll get doors that open up. You'll get hints, you know, because people are like, I don't know what I love to do. And I'm like, well, just write down on a piece of paper what you, the things you like to do. Not even love, just the things you like to do. Mm -hmm. I like to do this, but I do this. Okay. I like to do this, but I, I got too much work to do here. I like to do this, but I said, so it started to create you time for the things you like to do. Not necessarily go quit your job. I don't tell people that like start to create a day in your time, whether it's 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes to do what you like to do. If you like going on a walk, find a time of your day where you can find an hour or 30 minutes to just go out and get some fresh air and sun. If you like working out, if you like reading, there can be a time in your day you set aside whether it's 15, 20, 30 minutes that can change your whole game plan around. So um, it's just, you know, I, I just, those are like the, the the pivotal points that people do not understand. They see you at the top, like, oh, man, you're amazing. You're doing this. You're, and I say, yeah, but you don't see everything that it took on the groundwork. Y'all don't see the, the flights I had to take and come back into work and, you know, two or three hours of sleep. Y'all don't see what my body, you know, the damage my body is taking through modeling and, and doing all this, oh man, you on the yeah, man. But you know, fluctuating and weight up and down all the time is not healthy for you. You know what I'm saying? So um, it's just it's a learning tool. I've inspired other models that are big and tall models just like me, and they were having the same issues I was having. And they just didn't speak about it. I'm like, oh, like, look, this is what's going on. I'm very transparent on social media. Hey, I deal with anxiety, I deal with depression. Uh, I've never dealt with it until the pandemic, and now I know how to control it, now I know how to access it. Now I understand what you guys are going through, but I'm not in your guys' same situation, but I understand it. I get it because I couldn't understand how people had anxiety. I was like, why are you nervous? Like, what, what makes you just out of nowhere? And I was just like, oh, I get it now. Like, it's the unknown. It's like, mm -hmm. like you know, it's just the, the defense of fear just sitting in you. And so I was like, I've never been fearful of anything until the pandemic because everybody didn't know what was going on. You know, you've been told this, you've been told that. And then- True. Like, oh, I haven't even spent time with my family like I wanted to. Like, I want to travel with my family and do all this stuff with my wife and, and my, my brothers and sisters. I can't even do that now. Like, and I don't even know if we all going to make it out of this. And, you know, a lot of loved ones was lost. So, you know, you just, I become grateful. I become immensely grateful just for waking up in the morning. Like, I'm here. 
all right, cool. My family's here. I'm, that's all I need today, you know. Yeah, I got some pains here and there, you know, whatever the case is, but I'm here. So I need to do what I need to do. Why you have me here, I need to do what I in this day and what I can. I don't think too much about the future. I don't think too much about what could happen, how could this happen. It wastes too much time and energy, and it takes the focus on what you need to be doing today. So I tell people, enjoy the day. Embrace it. Mm-hmm. Use this time. Mm-hmm. You know, people's time is of the essence. When people ask to do things like this with me, and I'm late or in something like that, I feel really bad because I'm like, I value your time just like you value my time. So like when I'm pushed out of another meeting later or whatever the case is, I'm really apolog- apologetic. And people are like, oh, no, 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 man. You know, I'm like, no, like your time is just as important as mine. I think when people start to value their time even more, if they value time like they value their life, what, let me take it back. People value mm-hmm. time like they value their life. So if they push you know, like, oh, uh, you know, are the yes people, they're not really valuing what they're doing. But if they are like, hey, I need to be done by this time. I need to do this this time. Okay, you're running late. You know, things happen. But if it's not intentional, then that's when I start to under people, people really serious about what they're doing. You know, and it's like, you get a better understanding of individuals when you learn all that about yourself, you know. Because I was mm-hmm. unintentional about a lot of things, but I was intentional about a lot of things. So I may come off frustrated about a meeting over here that I should come frustrated about a meeting over here that I just had. But just because I care about this a little bit more, you know, I'm intentional over here, but I'm really kind of unintentional over here. I'm just listening, but it's not the, you know, the route I really want to take. But this is what I love doing. So that's why you get different personalities from different people. And that's why I tell people, you know, you might catch the warm side of somebody while somebody catches the cool side of somebody. So your take on someone and their mm-hmm. take on someone might be completely different. That's why I say relationships are that's a whole nother story. But yeah, I was getting off on the tangent again, girl. But yeah, that is <laughs> that is that is how I look at no. things. No, but but what you're saying is real though, because I think especially nowadays with everything that's going on, that we have uh lost our value mm. of service especially when it yeah. comes to social media and how people chase the numbers instead of chasing what they're actually mm-hmm. giving people and we stop serving people and we just want them to mm-hmm. to give to give 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 but you're not giving anything right. worth keeping or anything that's going to uh, bring a substantial amount not even a substantial just a little bit of right. value into their lives we we chase the money, we chase the numbers, but we're forgetting that is what you're offering something right. that is helpful. Uh, are, if you sat back and you look back at what you did, are you going to be proud or happy with what you delivered yeah. to the world? And and that's one of the things that I've you know definitely taken my time on social media, and I was just like with the list thing that you mentioned earlier, writing down things that you like to do not even love that you like to do and you'll find so much if you just you know take that thing and break it down you find so much wealth in the things that you like to do instead of following yeah. what's trending you get tired following trends really really quick because you're right. doing silly things and you're eating hot chips and you're trying to swallow cinnamon or just right. just silly stuff but none of that stuff is what you like to do but you're doing it to chase stuff so yeah i um in, in my new venture, I'm definitely trying to break down for personal businesses and brands. What yeah. are you doing <laughs> and why? Yeah. Do you even like doing it? And like, if you're going to move forward with it, making sure you're presenting yourself in an yeah. authentic light so that you are happy to continue. So when times get rough, you're not just going to throw your hands up and right. be like, it's not worth it. But if we get down to the core and to the why, then no matter if nobody's watching you get two views or if you get you know a hundred thousand views you're cool because you're servicing in a people your people in a in an authentic light to where you want to continue no matter what and that's one of the things with this podcast i will talk to anybody doesn't matter i'll talk to anybody that is willing to to share their message because i want to serve and give a community the community whomever whether it's present day or you know in 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 a time of the future tangible conversations with people who are making it happen or who have made it happen and that they can take away, you know, pointers to apply that That to their lives. That is, and you can't say people, see people get on social media for money. I want to make a lot of money. I want to be wealthy. And I tell them, I don't want to, I I don't have that mentality no more. I want to be comfortable, but I want to have wisdom. 
because like wisdom gives you long wealth that gives you wealth that just proceeds itself over time and continues to build on itself i don't want no quick rich and then i got to keep being like this person and keep doing this and keep showcasing and then you know and and you know you but it's easy to become entrapped in it because i've been there before oh they like these type of poses. i'm gonna keep putting them out there oh to be you know they like this i'll keep putting it out there but once you start to transform yourself you'll see like the people that really support you because i tell people followers go up and down every day mm -hmm. you know as soon as i start posting about faith and everything you start to see the people like oh okay i don't believe in god well that's cool you know i don't hold it against you mm -hmm. and it's just my beliefs and but once you stand on something long enough you kind of turn the cheeks of a lot of people and like huh let me go look back again oh he's still about that Oh, let me look back again three months later. Oh, he's still about that. You know, that's why I post my workouts every day, whether I'm walking, jogging, training, leaving out the gym, because people don't understand consistency. People are like, I want to lose weight. Like, how you lost weight? What did you eat? Same foods that are available to y'all. I send them a simple meal plan. Hey, uh, uh you know, measurements. No, I, I mean, common sense. Like, y'all know, you know, you're not, y'all know. I mean, because when you start to put too much energy, into something that turns to stress because you want it so bad so you really have to take a step back when you want to do something and analyze it from a broader view you know i knew i knew when i was gonna have my big weight loss transformation i could already see where i was gonna go but i wasn't forcing the issue of just like oh i gotta do this now i gotta do this i gotta post this i gotta show them what i'm nah they're just gonna see my day-to-day -day journey me reading the bible every day me working out every day boom then all of a sudden Man, you you look like a whole new person. Yeah, I I, I worked on my faith. I worked on my, my my wisdom. I worked on my peace. I worked on people mm -hmm. around me that I had around me that I just needed to separate myself from. And I had a lot of stuff that I had balled up inside of me. I didn't even know. You know, I didn't know I had stress. I didn't know I had anxiety. I didn't know I had depression. And anxiety shuts down your body. A lot of people are like, oh, I got all this stuff going on, you know, aches and stuff, headaches. I'm like, what are you thinking about? Oh man, I'm worried about this. I'm stressed about this. You know, you know, do you take time to yourself to read and just kind of separate yourself from everything? Or do you go a hundred miles per hour? Oh, I, I ain't got time for that. I said, whatever you don't have time for, especially if you don't have time for yourself, you'll never be able to catch up. You'll never be able to see what God is trying to do for you. You'll never be able to see the opportunities in front of your face. Cause some people walk straight through opportunities. They'll walk through a wide open door because they're so busy trying to figure this out. They're trying to figure that out. And that's when, you know, once you take that deep breath and sit back and look at things, they'll come to you. And the right people will come to you. And the wrong people will come to you. But the, nine times out of ten, you'll be guided to where you need to go and and, and get things done. And I, and I talk to a lot of IG famous models and all this type of stuff. And I just kind of instill in them, like, look, what do you want to be remembered for? Because a lot of what people see, mm -hmm. the millions of likes, the millions of followers, these people are really depressed. You know, they pay a lot of money for therapy. They pay a lot of money for, you know, just to keep a roof over their head. If all these brands go away, they're done. You know, okay, well, why am I going to come to your page? But you're not dressing. You know, like, look, what am I here for? Like, is there a personality? Is there like a, a something I come to, I get like, knowledge like a lot of people follow fashion for fashion a lot of people follow fashion for lust a lot of people follow fashion for other reasons but at the same time i tell people you you need to have a reason why you're feeding yourself this information like it needs to be a reason you're putting it into your system and every day yeah i look at models i look at trends i look at fashion i look at what's in you know i, I love fashion you know i am a model did i ever dream of being a model no you know people tell you you know do i Spend lots of money on clothing? Hell no. You know what I'm saying? Part of my language. But like, because I, I don't get, you know, once you see the material that stuff is made out of, you're paying for a name. Listen. And people don't want to, you know, people have let that secret out, but it just goes over people's head. Like, oh, like this is the same warehouse Amazon gets their stuff from. And it's three times as less. And I get people all the time like, where'd you get your shirt from? Amazon. How much was it? $6. It's actually better than the quality one that I got gifted from this high-end brand but you know you know people don't want to listen to that people want to be oh he got on fendi he's rocking prada you know he's rocking and i was just like yeah some of that stuff is good quality but the good quality that y'all think y'all getting the superstars are getting not the kind that come on the shelves that everybody mm -hmm. go and swipe their bags for i think yeah exactly and so sure. you look at michael michael kors you look at all these 
they got a store version of their stuff that they put in retail stores and then they got a higher level of quality that you order from like when you order like you're like oh okay why are these cheaper in store because it's not it's not made out the same quality this is a tier one tier three bag tier one bags that you see the superstars have that's the real deal quality you know what i'm saying the way they take the hand stitch and they do all that type of stuff but you know that's a whole different conversation but like i said you just got to know the worth and stuff and my worth is not in things i'm wearing no more it's not in what i put out there i was like look i want to i want to put health out there i want to let you know you can change your body or change the way you live or change your faith and thoughts i've always been a man of faith i just never really showcased it on social media so when people start me saying showcase, mm-hmm. oh man, what happened? Did you did you almost die? No. <laughs> like, I've always loved God. Like, you know, just because I ain't post about him every day. Oh, are you okay? Or, you know, yeah, I, I did have a health scare. You know, my blood pressure was up, but I mean, everything else is good on me. You know, so, you know, like I don't, I don't know. Like I didn't have a, you know, I would, I didn't almost pass away. From- a near death right experience. exactly they just think something <laughs> terribly went wrong and then it's, it's crazy because some of the demographics that i come against i lose all this weight hey man you on drugs what no <laughs> no i'm not okay i just had to check up on you You know you lost a lot of weight real fast yeah man that's why i documented every day of what i was doing so yeah it just gets really preposterous at times i'll just say that on some of the comments that i get but i don't let it get into I don't feed into it. I either just be like, no, and keep on moving. I swipe left, uh, you know, delete a lot of comments as well and keep on moving. People just want attention because they're not feeling the way they want to feel about themselves. So they mm. project that onto other people. Like, he can't feel this good. Let me put a comment down. See how he feels about this. Just be like, let me pray for this guy, a person. It's done. Because you got the option to follow people. That's how I don't, I've never understood that. People get on people pages and they comment all type of crazy stuff. You follow the person. Like, right? It's, 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 they put it right there for you, you know. So if you don't agree with what's going on on my page, just hit the unfollow. Like it's, it's that simple, you know. But people love to put paragraphs. Or you know what else they can do? They can they can put the phone down. It's that simple. It's that simple. So yeah, yeah. That's that's. Oof, yeah, these this is some good questions. Mm. Well, listen, I want to thank you so much for the time that you spent with me thus far. There's plenty of plenty of gems that people can. I know I'll be listening to this a couple of times and 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 continuing to to absorb all of the knowledge that you shared with us thus far. But I always have to get those three takeaways. You can share whatever three tips that you want, whatever is on your heart for these listeners to take and apply into their life, into their schedule. So what um, would those be? Be intentional with everything you do. Um be authentic in everything you do. Uh, and last but not least, because I'm a man of faith, keep God first in anything you do. And just to sum it all up, you know, being intentional, if you're going to do something, don't halfway do it. If you give somebody your word or give someone, mm-hmm. tell them you're going to do something, put everything into it to where you want somebody, that's what you will want in return. It's basically anything I do for people, I pretend I'm working for myself. How would I want to see this? How would I want to receive this? Um, being authentic, don't, fall into the norms of society, you know, trends are trends, music are music. Everything is, has its time and purpose or, you know, whether it's for good or bad, you can, I tell people, you can't name the top 10 rap songs from last summer. They'd be like, oh, oh, actually I can't, but you can name Michael Jackson's top five hits. Mm. So you understand the quality mm. of music that's been put out nowadays. Um, but, you know, be authentic in who you are and what you do, because that's what people follow, you know, and, Keep God first, or whoever you know is. I just just pray before you do anything, and I'm I'm I stick on that. That's the man of faith. So, uh, those are my three tips for you guys. Hope that helps, Abby. Thank you again for having me aboard. I appreciate you. Uh, this has been enlightening. It reminded me of a lot of things that I've come across and things that I've I've grown from. I am very appreciative of it, and it's a constant reminder of things I need to continue to work on and build on for myself as well. So, thank you. It has truly been a pleasure, and I thank you once again. For all of you who have been listening, please make sure you comment on your favorite part or something that you're going to implement. Share this with a friend. 
continue to follow. Oh, you know, before I, before I even get there, can you please share all of the places and spaces that people can follow and support you and, and, and continue with gotcha. this, on this journey uh, with you? My Instagram is built up real nice, spelled simply as it is. Um, B-U-L-I-T-U-P-R-E-A-L-N-I-C-E. Uh, you can check out my website, modelrobinson.com. I'm on TikTok as well. If you put in built up real nice, or I think it's on the Bucello Poppy because I work for some, you know, I, the Bustello is a coffee company, but it's a long story. We'll say that for another one. But uh, on TikTok, uh, Twitter, I'm built up real nice. Um, if you want some of the Christian remixes and apparel, that's wboomboomjesus.com. Um, but yeah, so if you type in any of that, everything is linked to one another. So if you go through Twitter, you'll get the links there. If you go through IG, you'll get the links there. Uh, there's a link tree link and all of that stuff that it connects you with me. Um, I tell people not to see me, shoot me DMs. I'm more professional with emails and faster with emails. I get bombarded with direct messages all the time so i don't see them for like weeks uh but if you shoot me an email um i will get back to you probably within a couple of days or, or the next day if possible so yeah those are my contact links is it and i'll have everything in the show notes as well follow directions people he's responsive but he's asked you if you want to get in contact with him how you can do that so follow be intentional and follow directions all right <laughs> well like i said before thank you so much for joining um please continue to support the podcast support james and all the things that he's doing and until next time we will see you